Samsung's Galaxy A36 is bringing something unexpected, a Snapdragon processor. While the company usually sticks to its own Exynos chips for mid-range smartphones, the Galaxy A36 is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 6 Gen 3. This is a shift that could appeal to many users, especially those who prefer Snapdragon processors for better efficiency and long-term performance. But how much of an upgrade is it compared to last year's Galaxy A35? The Snapdragon 6 Gen 3 replaces the Exynos 1380 that powered the previous model. According to Samsung, this new chip delivers an 8% boost in CPU performance. Benchmarks show that the Snapdragon 6 Gen 3 has better multi-core performance, while single-core speeds remain nearly the same as the Exynos 1380. This means tasks that rely on multiple cores, such as gaming, video editing, or running multiple apps at once, should see noticeable improvements. However, everyday tasks like browsing and social media might not feel dramatically different. Samsung hasn't provided details on GPU or NPU, neural processing unit, performance, but users can expect at least the same level of graphics and AI capabilities as the Exynos 1380. Given that the Snapdragon 6 Gen 3 is built on Samsung's own 4 nanometer process, efficiency should be comparable, ensuring better power management and battery life. The processor consists of four performance cores based on the Cortex-A78 architecture, clocked at 2.4 GHz, and four efficiency cores based on Cortex-A55. This setup balances speed and energy efficiency, making the device capable of handling both demanding applications and everyday tasks without excessive battery drain. The Adreno 710 GPU handles graphics, making the Galaxy A30 stick suitable for gaming, video streaming, and other media-intensive activities. When it comes to memory and storage, Samsung is offering flexibility. The Galaxy A36 comes in three RAM options, minus six gigabytes, eight gigabytes, and 12 gigabytes. Having more RAM helps with multitasking, ensuring apps run smoothly without frequent reloads. Storage choices include 128 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes, catering to users with different needs. Those who store a lot of photos, videos, and apps will likely appreciate the higher storage variant. Even though the Galaxy A36 doesn't bring a massive jump in performance compared to the A35, the shift to Snapdragon is a welcome change for many users. The Snapdragon 6 Gen 3 should provide a stable and smooth experience, handling most tasks with ease. It might not be a flagship level chip, but it is more than capable for everyday use. One major question is how the phone will hold up over time. Samsung has committed to providing six years of Android OS updates for its mid-range devices, which means the Galaxy A30 sticks could eventually run Android 21. While long-term software support is a great feature, performance degradation over time is a common issue. With each major update, the phone's hardware will have to keep up with new features and system changes. Samsung's latest Galaxy A series phones bring some exciting upgrades, but not all changes are for the better. The Galaxy A36 and Galaxy A50 sticks are losing a feature that many users have relied on for years, expandable storage. This move brings them closer to Samsung's premium phones, which have already abandoned the microSD card slot. But is this a necessary change, or is Samsung taking away something valuable from mid-range users? For years, one of the biggest advantages of mid-range and budget Galaxy phones was their support for microSD cards, while flagship models like the Galaxy S series moved away from expandable storage, budget-conscious users still had the flexibility to add more space whenever they need it. That changes with the 2025 Galaxy A lineup. The Galaxy A36 and Galaxy A50 sticks are the first in their respective lines to drop the microSD slot. This means that users will have to rely on built-in storage or cloud-based alternatives to store their photos, videos, and apps. Samsung has been phasing out expandable storage gradually, starting with its most expensive phones. Now it's clear that this trend has reached the mid-range lineup as well. For some users, this might not be a big deal, especially if they use cloud storage or don't store large files on their devices. However, for those who relied on microSD cards for easy expansion, this could feel like a downgrade rather than an upgrade. There is one exception though. The lower cost Galaxy A26 still supports expandable storage, and it even allows microSD cards of up to two terabytes, an improvement from the previous one terabyte limit. This means that users who prioritize storage flexibility might find the A26 a better choice despite it being the most affordable model in the series. It's an interesting decision by Samsung, removing microSD support from the more expensive models while keeping it in the cheapest option. Without expandable storage, buyers of the Galaxy A30 sticks and Galaxy A50 sticks will have to carefully choose between the two available storage options, 128 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes. 
While this may be enough for casual users, those who store a lot of media files, games, or high-resolution videos might quickly run out of space. With no microSD option, the only alternatives will be cloud-based solutions like Google Drive or Own Drive, or using USB external drives for backups. Cloud storage can be convenient, but it often requires a paid subscription for larger capacities, and it isn't always practical in areas with limited internet access. Aside from the storage change, the new Galaxy L models do bring some solid upgrades. Samsung has improved build quality, refreshed the camera design, and extended software support, making these devices feel more premium. The removal of expandable storage might have been a cost-cutting decision or an effort to push users toward higher storage variants and cloud circuses. Either way, it's a change that will impact how users manage their data. The question remains, does losing expandable storage make these phones less appealing? Some users may not be affected at all, while others might see it as a deal breaker. It's clear that Samsung is following a trend that has already been adopted in the flagship segment, but mid-range buyers tend to have different priorities. Many people in this price range appreciate the ability to extend storage without paying extra for higher variants or subscriptions. So what do you think? Is Samsung making the right move by removing expandable storage, or is this a step in the wrong direction? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates on the latest tech. 2025 might be the year of ultra-slim smartphones, with big brands racing to create the thinnest flagship device. Samsung has already teased the Galaxy S25 Edge, expected to launch in April, while Apple is working on the iPhone 17 Air, set to arrive later this year. But surprisingly, a lesser-known brand might actually outshine them both in the slim smartphone competition. Just ahead of MDVC 2025, one of the biggest tech events in the world, Chinese brand Techno, has revealed the Spark Slim, which claims to be the world's thinnest smartphone. What makes it even more impressive is that it packs a 5,200 mAh battery while being just 5.75 mm thick. On top of that, it features dual 50 megapixel cameras, making it a strong contender in the ultra-thin category. However, there's a big catch. The Spark Slim is still just a concept. While Techno plans to showcase demo units and MVVC, there's no official launch date, and there's a real chance this phone may never hit store shelves. If history is any indication, many concept devices don't always make it to production. For example, Techno's ultra-thin tri-fold phone from last year was an exciting reveal, but it never became a real, commercially available product. Still, the specifications of the Spark Slim are impressive. It features a 6.78-inch AMOLED display with curved edges, offering a sharp 1,224 resolution and a smooth 144 hertz refresh rate. The screen is also said to be incredibly bright, reaching a peak of 4,500 nits, which is higher than most flagship devices. The front camera is a 13-megapixel sensor placed within a small punch-hole cutout. Inside, the 4.04-millimeter thick battery supports 45-watt fast charging, and while the camera bump does add some thickness, a phone remains impressively compact overall. At just 5.75 millimeters thick, this device is an engineering achievement, especially considering its battery size. For comparison, the upcoming Galaxy S25 Edge is rumored to be around 6 millimeters thick and will likely feature a 4,000 mAh battery. That means Techno has managed to fit a significantly larger battery in a thinner design, which raises the question, how did they do it? The answer lies in advancements in battery technology, specifically the use of silicon carbon batteries. This new battery type allows for higher energy density while keeping the overall size compact. A similar approach was seen in the OM Plus 13, which used silicon carbon technology to fit a massive 6,000 mAh battery without making the phone too bulky. By using this innovation, Technito has managed to push the limits of smartphone design, at least in terms of what's possible on paper. Meanwhile, Apple's upcoming iPhone 17 Air is also expected to be one of the thinnest smartphones ever, with reports suggesting it could measure around 5.5 millimeters at its thinnest point. However, Apple is unlikely to include a battery as large as Techno's Spark Slim. Apple's focus has always been on optimizing software efficiency rather than just increasing battery size. 